are the contents of my presentation about Nervasure. So first of all, uh, um, it is important to remember that currently, at least in Europe, the use of continuous intraoperative neuromonitoring is increasing. And according again to this last published paper, published on the British Journal of Surgery, uh, the rate of continuous uh, uh, of palsy of the recurrent nerve is decreasing, uh, while the there is an increasing use of the continuous mode of application. As for the APS uh, um, application, uh, so first of all, uh, please remember that the approach to the carotid sheet, and that is to say to the vagal nerve, uh, can be medial to the strap muscle or lateral to the strap muscle, medial usually for goiter or Graves disease, paratary surgery or during an endoscopic procedure, while the lateral approach to the vagal nerve usually is uh, done in uh, uh, reduced surgery or in cancer procedure. According to our publication in 2014, vagal nerve localization can be different, can be anterior in the carotid sheet or more commonly in the posterior, posterior to the common carotid artery or to the jugular vein. Please remember that uh, for the correct position of the APS, a 30, 60 degrees dissection of the vagal nerve is required, as you can see in this brief video. Then the APS is gently positioned into the carotid sheet. Uh, the nervature is settled at one million pair. It is, this is sufficient to have a, a good uh, um, response by the uh, vagal nerve itself. Uh, while it is noted that for the intermittent mode of application, 0 0.5 is uh, a good intensity to appreciate, for example, recurrent nerve ramification, uh, and three milliampere for the intermittent mode of application for nerve mapping. For the setup, as the APS is well settled on the vagal nerve, we need to adjust the baseline, that is to say a mean value of the amplitude and a mean value of the latency. And uh, uh, very easily and uh, spontaneously, the uh, nervature will uh, and the mean vital will adjust on the best single channel mode. Uh, that is to say, present the channel with the highest EMG amplitude obtained during uh, uh, the baseline set level. Uh, according to guidelines, please remember that the amplitude should be higher than uh, 500 microvolts. At the end of this segment, uh, I always suggest to uh, choose, of course, the side of the dissection, that is to say left or right. As for the recording during the whole procedure, uh, the mean vital and the nervature will uh, give you a permanent, continuous feedback of the latency and of the amplitude uh, of, during, of the recurring Geneva during the uh, dissection. Uh, these values are uh, obtained to the APS, so this is an indirect stimulation of the recurring Geneva to the direct stimulation of the uh, back and nerve. According uh, to uh, what uh, um, we did, uh, Craig, uh, together with myself and Henning Dralle, we settled uh, a criteria uh, of alarm for the nervature according to the decreasing or increasing of the amplitude and latency in colors like green, yellow, and red, and with the loss of signal. During the procedure, we have uh, uh, the recording of the latency and the amplitude. And please remember that uh, when there is a decrease of uh, uh, amplitude together with uh, an increase of latency, so the so-called combined events, this means that nerve is under risk. 
while when there is an isolated increase of latency or isolated degrees of amplitude. This means that this is only a track displacement or tube displacement. So the highest risk for the vagan nerve palsy, for the um, vocal cord palsy, is the combined events of amplitude degrees and latency increase. And this is an example given by the nervature. You can see on the top uh, the latency increasing and on the bottom the amplitude uh, uh, decreasing. And you can appreciate the different colors given by the nervature. So what is important? How long to wait for an intraoperative vagus amplitude recover after loss of signal? We have a nice study by Schneider published in 2019 that according to the study, the mean time of recovery was about 10 to 15 minutes with some difference between LOS type 1 and LOS type 2. Moreover, uh, the study, the same study, well uh, described that the identification of nerve recovery of the love of signal associated with or without uh, post-operative vocal cord palsy was uh, quite high with high recurrency, occurrency when there was a degrees of more than 50% of uh, amplitude. Uh, of course, uh, we still know this is extremely important uh, that uh, the nervature can, can give us a good feedback uh, in case of traction injury to the recurrent nerve, uh, to the, the so-called uh, slowly, slowly uh, injuries to the vagan, to the recurrent nerve, uh, like traction or, or compression. Please remember uh, that in case of acute injury to the recurrent nerve, like uh, for example, a, a thermal injury or sexual injury, we cannot have a good feedback from the uh, machine. So a, a little bit of caution when uh, you are using the uh, device. When we have a loss of signal, we should use this information. We need to identify the site of lesion, stratify uh, the type of LOS, elucidate the mechanism of injury. Uh, we should um, uh, uh, give a corrective action, predict the outcome, modify the surgical maneuver. So this information given by the nervature is in, in quite important. At the end of the procedure, uh, according to guidelines, the minimum necessary documentation to put in the medical chart should be at least the V2 first site resection to justify the bilateral procedure. Please always indicate the time frame and side. Very well, never should report all the uh, information during the procedure. And if we do compare the intermittent mode of application and the continuous mode of application, definitely the continuous mode of application with the nervature gives more information, more documentation, more report of the procedure. Definitely we can comment that uh, the consequence of the use of continuous mode application are a higher, uh, more important than the only consequence of the intermittent mode of application. In conclusion, uh, there is strong, robust data from the literature of the superiority uh, of continuous uh, uh, stimulation of the vagal nerve over the intermittent mode of application. And this was uh, recently published by British Journal of Surgery by the group of Dralle that point out uh, well uh, that uh, vocal pole palsy rate was less when using continuous uh, mode of application than the intermittent one. Thank you for this opportunity.